Hey everyone, the name's Eric Thor, and in today's video I want to talk about how your type can get more energy. What gives each personality type the highest amount of energy? Because the most profound thing I've discovered is that energy is not something we have a finite amount of. We are not human batteries, walking batteries that have and start out the day with a certain amount of energy and that end the day with less amounts of that energy. According to the energy principle, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, so energy must be something that moves and changes form all the time. And so energy must be constantly transmitted. We are giving energy to other people, we are taking energy from other people and from our environment and from the world of imagination. Truth is, energy is just raw interest. It's how interested, how curious you are. It's how conscious you are. If you are conscious, if you have energy, you pay more awareness to what's happening around you. You're more interested in the world around you. You're more interested overall. And so you can show a higher amount of consciousness, a higher conscious awareness of your world, of who, where you live, of who you are, of what decisions you make. So if energy is something we can acquire and grab onto when we're feeling low on it, how come we end up calling our friends and postponing meeting up because we're too tired? How come we skip out on parties? How can we stay at home watching Netflix? How can we end up so often in front of the television or doing nothing at all, just staring up at the ceiling? And how come other people seem to have so endless reserves of energy? How come other people seem to be constantly motivated, constantly energized, always doing something, always having fun, always being out everywhere, always having engaging discussions, always having an infinite amount of energy? I'm not here to argue that energy can be faked or that you can just think yourself energized, think yourself interested, think yourself curious. That's not how you do it. That's not how you actually get energy. Energy is something we lose when we do things that bore us, things that take energy, things that we don't want to do, things that we don't find fun, things that we find tedious or distracting. Geez, no wonder work can leave us so tired. Yeah, so if we look back to our last week and we think back, what did I do last week? If it's easy for you to remember what you did, not by cheating, not by going back in calendars, not by counting what you usually do on that day, but by actually just remembering, oh, I was out there and I had met that person and I went there and I was at work. If you're able to actually actively remember what you did throughout the last week, that suggests that you had fun doing it and that suggests that you had more energy that week. But if you don't find it fun at all, if you find it uh, the week boring, then you would, won't recall a lot of it. This will be like it just became a blur, like it just passed by and you had no idea what you even did throughout the week. And that's a scary thing, uh, that we can go through life, that we can go through work and everything that happens around us, and we can feel so blatantly unaware of everything. We had so much... <laughs> we, had, we were so bored... But we never thought about it, we never realized it, we just let it pass by as if it wasn't worth anything. When there must have been things that we could have done throughout that day that could have given us energy, things that could have surprised us, things that could have motivated us, things that we could have had much more fun with, things that could have challenged and stimulated us. The biggest reason I'm bored is often due to lack of stimulation. Another reason I'm bored is because I force myself out in the streets where there are so many lights, so much things happening, so many people talking in each over, over each other's heads, and so many strong sensations that just overwhelm me. And sure, I can fake it for a while, I can pretend to be having fun, I can pretend to be happy, but the day after I'm just depressed, I'm just grumpy, I'm just not myself. And other days I can explore new research, I can go to new places, I can try out new things, I can meet new people, I can have engaging intellectual discussions, and I have just so much energy. When I go to bed it's like I can't even fall asleep because I have so much inspiration. I remember days when I told my friends I was leaving the party because I was so bored, but suddenly I met up with someone and we had a good, engaging, fun discussion, and I remember telling my friends, actually I'm staying, actually I got my energy back. And it just made me realize that if I want to have fun, if I want energy, if I want to be able to do the things I want to do in my life, explore my hobbies, continue pursuing my passion, then I need to make sure that I keep getting this active amount of inspiration. 
then I need to keep reading, I need to keep studying, I need to keep theorizing, I need to keep developing new theories, I need to keep simulating, imagining, envisioning, creating new concepts, speculating and predicting and imagining how likely something is or how unlikely something is. Getting challenged by seeing things I don't understand yet or by having to synthesize complex information. And if you are intelligent, that just means you need more stimulation than normal people do. And that's why it also makes so much sense that we have so many intelligent people out there that do nothing, that are lazy, that have no energy to do anything. Because getting that amount of stimulation is more difficult than it would be for a normal person. And so there are a few things that I would like to pass on to each personality type on how they can get more energy. For the intuitive extrovert, make sure that you keep a steady stream of new information coming along, new patterns to jump on, new trends to explore, new things to test out. If you feel yourself losing and uh, lacking on that information, make sure that you can find new environments that are stimulating, go to new places that you haven't been to before, check out things that you haven't seen before, find out what's hidden in your room, or find study what is hidden between the lines of what people say. Make connections and start building patterns around you. For the sensing extrovert, keep a level of intensity going in each, each situation. Make sure that there are always things around you you can grab onto, people you can talk to, people you can engage, people you can meet up with. Try to keep a level of sound and stimulation around you. Study the people around you, study the nature around you, study what's happening in the world in real time. Live in the now, create a stage for yourself to express yourself and to be yourself fully. Draw people towards you, be magnetic, be where the part is. For the intuitive introvert, remember that for you it's not about being excited or enthusiastic, it's about being fascinated, completely devoted to a project or to a study, to be in active contemplation, to find yourself and your thoughts rolling forward, new realizations, new insights, new discoveries coming over, on and on and on again. Just a steady stream of new ideas, new thoughts, new simulations, new ways to think about things. Energy for you is not when you're talking loudly or when you are exhibiting yourself on a YouTube channel. It's when you're thinking, it's when you're engaging in your own passive contemplation. With time, become able to notice the difference between being stuck and being in active contemplation. Don't obsess, don't repeat over and over, but go deeper and deeper and deeper. Keep expanding in perspective and in awareness. And for the sensing introvert, remember that time when you shot the goal. Remember that time when you aced that presentation. Remember that time when your dad told you that profound quote about who you were. Remember who you are. Remember where you were yesterday. Remember what you did throughout the, your life. Remember what you've always done, what, who you've always been. Remember the role you've always served to the world. Remember how you do things and how you, what your personal way of doing things are. Practice, repeat, rehearse until you perfect. And no matter what type you are, remember how important it is to have a hobby, to have a project, to have something that you can work towards. Something that isn't work, but something that you do because it's fun. We all need to think about what we do throughout the day and we need to remember that at each moment think about what it is I can do to have fun. But there is also another trick you can take on if your old ones don't work. As an intuitive, intuition is fun regardless if it's introverted or extroverted. But there is also another thing you can do if your normal routine doesn't work for you. And this trick is really, really cool. But it requires some bravery. So if you're not brave, you can't do it. As an intuitive, intuition is fun in itself, on its own, regardless if it's introverted or extroverted. But there is a half towards intuition that you find yourself not actively practicing. And the cure reason for this as an intuitive is because you are afraid of it. It's outside your comfort zone. It's outside what you feel comfortable doing. If you had to do it, you would tense up doing it, or you would become a little restless or a little uncertain about it. 
And we all have these things that we find super fun, super interesting, super immersive, but that require us to step out of that shell and to open up and to try it out. And if you can go outside of your comfort zone, and if you can explore these thoughts, you open up a whole new world of possibilities, things that you can explore, things that you can do, as long as you are brave enough to do it, to try it. And often, the case with these projects is that they give us this sort of thrill that we aren't used to. It gives us this sort of wow, wow, was this possible? I've never done anything like this. And that is intuition on a whole nother level. And that is also why ENFPs say INFJs and INTJs are so much fun. But that is also why other people say they don't like INFJs or INTJs. It really comes down to how open you are to going outside your comfort zone. It really comes down to how open you are to going outside your comfort zone. But if you're ready for an energy kick, think, think of what it is you want to pursue, what you find yourself thinking about pursuing, but what you are at the moment afraid of pursuing. And tell yourself, whatever happens, happens, and then take a leap of faith. And for all of you who have taken these leaps of faith, feel free to tell me in the comments down below what it meant for you. What did it open up for you? Did it open up a business opportunity for you? Did it give you some form of new opportunities to travel? Did it help you towards overcoming an anxiety or an issue in your life? Tell me about challenging your comfort zone and tell me about the energy kick you got out of doing it. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to stay tuned for the next video.